In this video, we're going to talk about how to add citations to an R Markdown document. A good data scientist is going to appropriately acknowledge the sources of information or resources they use to produce their work. And if you're not familiar with citations, then this acknowledgement of using someone else's work is known as a citation, and the act of acknowledgement is citing someone's work. And we're going to talk about how to add citations in an R Markdown document through the YAML header. So in order to cite something in R Markdown, you have to have a file that contains your references. There's two different ways or two different storage formats that you can use to store your references. The most common one, or at least the mo one I'm most familiar with, is known as a bib file. And it can use either the bibtech or biblatex format. You can also use a CSL file, which uses the citation style language. I truly know absolutely nothing about the citation style language. It may be great, but we're going to focus on the bib format because that's what I'm most familiar with. So what exactly is BibTeX? Well, BibTeX is a reference manager like Zotero or Mendeley, and BibTeX asks you to store your references in a separate bib file. And the reason we do that is because storing, by storing the references in a separate file, it makes it easier to separate the presentation of your citations from the storage of your citations. BibTeX is most widely known for being used to manage references in LaTeX, which is an academic typesetting system common in mathematics, but it can also be used in other settings such as in R Markdown documents. We're only going to talk about the most basic aspects of BibTeX, so if you want additional information, I encourage you to go to the BibTeX website, which I have shown you here, and you can look at different aspects of the BibTeX reference manager here. There are three key ingredients to creating a BibTeX reference. The first is the entry type, which indicates the type of document that you want to cite. The second key ingredient is a cite key, which is a unique label that you use to refer to a specific reference. Lastly, each different reference is going to have various entry fields, which are the pieces of information that BibTeX needs in order to properly cite the reference. Let's talk about the entry type in more detail. So the entry type, as I said before, is the type of document that you want to cite. There are currently 14 different entry types, with the most common ones being, from my experience, the article, which is a journal or magazine article, a book, which can be either a physical or online book, manual, which become, has become increasingly important as we need to cite technical documentation, such as R packages or Python packages, and then there's MISC or miscellaneous which is what you use when none of the other entry types apply. And this is commonly used for websites, which we frequently cite in our documents, or at least I do. The other entry types are shown here. And I don't want to talk about them in more detail, but you can pause the video if you want to look at them. But these are other entry types that you can cite in an R Markdown document. Now let's talk about the site key. So the site key is a unique identifier that you're going to use for a specific reference. And my recommendation is to use site keys that are short but descriptive so that it's very clear which object you're referring to. So for example, let's say that you wanted to cite Return of the King, which is the third novel in J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings trilogy. You might use the site key R-O-T-K for Return of the King. It's short and the abbreviation matches the name of the book and so if you're looking through your site keys, hopefully that would remind you that, oh, this is the reference for Return of the King, and it would make it easier to use that in your document. Lastly, let's talk about the fields entries. So the fields are specific pieces of information that are needed for each entry type. One thing to be careful about, though, is that different entry types require different information. So you don't necessarily need to specify the same fields for different entry types. However, nearly all entry types require the following fields. So pretty much every entry type is going to have a title, which is the title of the item to be referenced, author, which is the person, persons, or organization that created the reference item, and year, which is going to indicate the year the reference item was produced. There are many different fields that you might need to add in order to provide all the information for a specific entry type. 
And because of that, I wanted to at least briefly show other fields that you might need to provide. And so I wanted to at least briefly show those here. And so you can see there are many different field types that you might need to provide in order to complete the information for a particular reference. So at this point, you know a little bit about BibTeX and the key ingredients to creating a BibTeX reference, but we haven't actually talked about what the BibTeX entries look like. So in what follows, we're going to assume that we have a file crash-rmd.bib, which is literally the bib file I'm using for this document right here. And let's assume that it contains two citation entries, which I have produced exactly as they are in that bib file below. So we have this first entry here and this second entry here, and let's talk about them in a little more detail. So after the at symbol is the entry type, which in this case is manual, because I want to cite the documentation for the book down R package. After the entry type, you're going to have a set of opening and closing curly braces with relevant information in between them. And the first piece of information immediately after the open curly brace is going to be the site key, which in this case I have set to be book down 2022. Book down because that is the documentation I want to cite, and 2022 is the year that the documentation is relevant for. And you can see that after this comma here, I have another number of field entries. And so I have title, author, year. I have a note here indicating the R package version for the particular documentation version I'm using in this document. And then also a URL, so the website basically for book down if someone wants additional information. I have a second citation here. This time I have at book, indicating that I have a book that I want to cite. And after the opening curly brace, I have given it the site key SP2013. This is a book on spatial statistics that came out in 2013. And so I've used that identifier. That's, that is enough information for me to know what reference this site key refers to. And then other field entries that I have here are author which indicates the authors of this particular book, title, which is the title of the book, the year the book was published, the publisher of the book, and then the book also has a URL, and so I've included that here. If you want to see the particular bib file on your computer, you can actually run this code in the R console to download it into your current working directory, directory and then opening it. However, I actually have that file open on my computer, so I'm simply going to go to our studio so we can look at that file in more detail. And so you can see here is my bib file here. It's just a plain text file with the .bib file name, and I have the two different entry types. And if you have a bib file that you want to use in your R Markdown document, you want to make sure that you put the bib file in the same directory as the R Markdown document. So the name of this R Markdown document on my computer is 02-crashcourseinrmd.rmd. And so it's in this folder here on my computer. And if I scroll down, I actually see a bunch of different bib files because I have many different bib files for different documents. But if we look right here, we see the crash.rmd.bib file, which is open right here. And I've made sure to put that bib file in the exact same folder as the document that is going to be using it. After you have placed the bib file in the same folder as the working document, you're going to need to modify your YAML header in order for the R Markdown document to know what bib file you want to use for references. So specifically, you want to add something like this in the YAML header, bibliography colon, and then a space here, and then file name dot bib, where of course you would replace file name with whatever the file name is for the bib file that you particularly want to use. In this case, it's going to be crash-rmd.bib. If you have multiple bib files that you want to use, which I'm actually doing in this particular document, you can do something similar, but instead of having the file name on the same line as bibliography, on new lines, you're going to have dashes, and then after the dash, you're going to indicate the name of the different bib files that you want to use in your R Markdown document. So you can see here that we have crash-rmd.bib, but then I have another file packages underscore crash-rmd.bib, which is a little different, and I use to cite it in different parts of this document. 
In case you wanted to see what it would actually look like to include that information in my RMD file, I've gone to the RMD file here in RStudio, and you can see that I have added various information to the YAML header already, but then at the bottom of the YAML header, I have added information related to the bibliography. So if you wanted to add a bibliography to your document, you could add something like this to your YAML header and get similar results. Now that we have created our bib file and modified our YAML header so that the document knows where the citations are located, we can now actually cite the different references in our R Markdown document. So to cite a reference from our bib file, we are going to use at cite key if we wanted to cite the reference as a proper noun. So for example, if I had a sentence, Astley 1987 made the following conclusions, then this is the citation style that I would use. The citation format is a little bit different if we want to reference a citation parenthetically. So for example, if you wanted the citation Astley 1987 to be shown in parentheses, then you would actually surround the cite key with square brackets, and that would produce something like this in your actual document. Sometimes you want to make reference to multiple citations simultaneously, in which case you can use generally this format right here with each of these citation keys being separated by a semicolon. Or if you need to provide additional information about a reference, then you should add that information after a comma after your citation in these square brackets right here. So if you wanted to cite Smith 2021, for example, and then the information was in chapter seven, after the at citation or after the at cite key, and then in between these square brackets, after our comma, we might write chapter seven, which might produce something like this. So if you cite references in your document using the techniques we've, are, we've been discussing in this video, then when you knit your document, then you're going to get references in this format in the places where you use the at citation key notation. And then at the end of your document, it's going to also add lengthier pieces of information for those references. So you can see here that I have many additional references beyond just the two that we've already discussed. But, so let's look at some actual rendered examples based on the two entries that we have previously discussed. So if I wrote at Bookdown 2022 in my document, then when I actually compile the document, in this case, it would be rendered as she 2022A. This is the author name. This is the year. And then the A is because I have more than one reference for that particular year. And if I have at SP 2013 in the square brackets, then I'm going to get that parenthetical citation for that spatial data analysis book that we've previously mentioned. If I want to cite both of these references parenthetically, then I can separate them by a semicolon, in which case I have the first reference colon the second reference shown, shown here in these parentheses. And then lastly, if I wanted to, for example, refer to a specific section, of the book down documentation, I can add that as a comma in this parenthetical reference. And when I do that, then it's going to render the reference. And then after the comma, it's going to give the additional information that I provided. I've only touched on small aspects of what you can do with references. You can change the citation styles. You can use multiple bit files, which we at least briefly mentioned. You can have hyperlinks to your different references and many other options. I'm not going to discuss those options in this video, but if you do want more information about citations, you can refer to the book down documentation here.